Hey everybody, we're going to be talking a little bit about virtual and augmented reality headsets tonight and Logic, because that's uh, the thing I'm interested in. With the release of the Vision Pro tomorrow, uh, I'm sure there's a number of people who are thinking, man, it would be really cool to be able to do some virtual reality on a headset like that. I, maybe not. There's a, probably a bunch of people who are thinking that would be stupid to put uh, a headset on your head to do music production. Well, I thought, um, because I'm super interested in that technology, and yet I don't have $4,000 sitting around to buy one with all the bells and whistles you would need, but I do have the Quest 3 from Meta, which I'm super happy with in a lot of ways for some of the things I do in terms of being able to edit and experience the spatial audio and um, the the 360 and 3D videos that I create. Uh, and so that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today. Is this something, because this is, you know, around $500, um, is that something that you could get and do the same thing with? Well, uh, I've been messing around with an app called uh, Virtual Desktop. It was about $20 as an add-on to the Quest. And uh, it connects right up to my Mac and it passes audio back and forth. And it also lets me control the computer. And so I thought I would just put some uh, images on the screen here. Uh, you can also just put it in mixed reality, which means you can be sitting anywhere and just have that screen floating in front of you and uh, be able to work with logic. One monitor at a time, you can do multiple monitors, but just one at a time. Uh, and so you could go through and, and work with that. Now, mixed reality means it has that pass-through feature so you can see the things around you. I gotta tell you, while it's not perfect, I really feel like there's some potential here. Now, what are you gonna get with the Vision Pro that's different than, than the Quest 3? A lot of quality issues. And you're gonna have a, a, a more powerful processor with the Vision Pro. The pass-through features are gonna look better. Um, you're going to be able to, in some ways, more easily connect to Logic Pro on your computer. And there's still some question marks. It may be out there already. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet, but um, the Vision Pro can run iPad apps. And so does that mean you're going to be able to load Logic Pro for iPad directly on the Vision Pro? Even if you did that, even if you just um, loaded that app, or even if you ran it from your computer, uh, you only have the one hand with the, the pinching feature to move things around. You're going to look at a thing and click and look at a thing and click. And so you're going to be stuck or you're going to have to attach uh, a mouse and a keyboard and, and run it the, the old fashioned way, right? Using the mouse and keyboard, which is fine. Um, with the, the Meta Quest 3, we can connect the keyboard and mouse and uh, we can connect to our Mac laptop or desktop. And so we can run the full version and we don't necessarily have to be tied into sitting in front of the computer at that point. And if you have a small screen, I mean, there's something to be said for pulling on the headset and having a massive wall or putting it in a theater or you know, any number of things that you can do with this. And so I do feel like there's some value in looking at maybe this, this option if you really want that immersive experience but can't pay for the four thirty five to $4,000, 3500 to $4,000. If you can't uh, foot that bill right now or don't want to jump in on the brand new technology, then consider maybe the Quest 3, which has many of the features, albeit because it's such a, a price difference, you're going to have the compromises, right? You're not going to have the full experience of the Vision Pro, but you're not paying for it in the smaller package. I think with that one app, the, the virtual desktop, 
that my experience has been great. Uh, it has been amazing in the sense that um, it's clear, it's responsive. I can move things around. I've got my two controllers, or you can also use your hands. Um, it just doesn't have the eye tracking. And so um, that's one thing that's going to be seen, whether that is a, a huge enough difference to spend all the extra money. Now, you're not going to have all of the other features of the Vision Pro, but many of those we have on the on the Quest 3 because we have the 3D experience and we have um, the 360 uh, videos on platforms like YouTube and, and others. And we have a ton more games that are in virtual immersive reality. And so I think that while, yes, you might not have some of those things like the eyes that kind of show through on the front, and uh, you might not have some of the tight integration with the Apple ecosystem of apps, um, this still can reach in and do a lot of that. And so I think that that's something to really be uh, considered as you're looking at these tools and experiencing it. Am I going to be using Logic on my headset? Uh, there are going to be a few instances where I am. For sure. I'm going to, uh, at some point, be thinking of something uh, to do for one of my projects. I'm just going to load it up on the headset while I'm sitting upstairs and not have to come downstairs to the basement, make a couple changes or do an export or something, and uh, that'll be perfect. So, yes, there are some times I can see myself using it. Am I going to use it every day? No. Uh, it's not something that's an environment that I want to be in. It's more of a media or a gaming function, but it does allow us to have a little bit more of that interaction if we want to. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. Just another thing to think about. If you want to get in on this technology, you don't have to go for the Vision Pro if you're a Logic user and want to use Logic in a virtual reality or a mixed reality type setting. Okay. Okay.